the next topic I would like to introduce is the convolution integral or the operation of convolving together two functions. Say that you consider two generic functions, say one exponential and one sinusoid. You can in principle combine them together by summing or subtracting or multiplying. You still end up with a function. So in this sense the composition of two functions is again is a function. And this is the same concept for the convolution. The convolution of two functions is another function. There is an independent variable, in this case it will be kept by indicating by the letter t, and then the output will be just a number for every element of t, independent variable here. Let me show you how the convolution is defined for these two functions, f of t and g of t. It is defined through an integral, and it's the integral between minus infinity to plus infinity of the product of the two functions. But you will notice something funny. So both functions have a so-called dummy variable, so this is the integration variable. I call it tau. Tau here, tau here, and tau here. And t is considered fixed. So the convolution I said is a function, so for every value of the independent variable t, I have just one number. This number is obtained as the area of the product, where t is therefore fixed. For every t here, t is actually kept fixed. Another thing I would like to notice, before diving a little bit more into an intuitive understanding of this otherwise pretty dry abstract definition of a way to compose two function, is to notice that this operation of convolution is commutative. So you can reverse the order f and g or g and f, where one of the two is uh, not translated, flipped as we will see in a moment and shifted and it's other. So you can actually change f for g and here g for f equivalently. Let me try to explain in a, with an example what a convolution of two function is. First let me take two generic examples. So f of t is this uh, arch of exponential, it's a decaying, it's probably uh, um, a common exponential function, whereas g of t is a function that is everywhere zero with the exception of this so-called interval called support, which is the interval where the function gets uh, non-zero values. So from 1 to 4 is non-zero, it is this uh, decaying arch, and then it's zero before and it's zero uh, after. Let me now try to get a little bit closer to help your intuition of what we actually see here. Here we see that the integration variable is tau. So, well, as I said many times, variables are just names. So f of tau, well, yes, the axis, the horizontal axis now is labeled as tau, not anymore t, and it's the same function. And here for g, I take one step further. I consider not g of tau, but g of minus tau. And yes, I relabel the horizontal axis as tau instead of t, and I apply the concept of multiplying negative number inside the function. So you see here that I multiply minus 1 inside the function. And as I told you the other times, this is corresponding to a rigid flip, a symmetric flipping around the vertical axis. You see here the function was 0 before 1 and after 4, it has been actually flipped and now it's uh, non-zero only between minus 4 and minus 1. This should be pretty intuitive. Let me add the final ingredient, which is this additive uh, uh, parameter here inside. So this is the function g of minus tau, let's add t. I emphasize it once more, for every t here, t is to be considered fixed. And this is just one number, the area below the product of these two functions, with this flipping and with a rigid translation. This is an example of this rigid translation, and I will vaguely or in an abstract way show you what happens when you start changing the value of t, and you start increasing or decreasing it. There is a progressive slide of one function towards the other in this case, and something that, is, that I'm not representing here, but it will be clear in the next slide, 
is that these two functions have to be multiplied for every value of t, so for every snapshot, like in this case for this value of t, this one for this other value of t, and this one for this other other value of t, they have to be multiplied and then the area below has to be computed. Let me make an example. In this case, f and g are both rectangular function. Well, they are not like the rectangle function p of t that I show you uh, uh, in the previous videos. Here the amplitude is just one. It does not change with the, uh, uh, with, with this. there is no epsilon, there is no shrinking. There are two rectangle functions and I will show you what it means flipping one of them and then sliding, then multiplying them together and taking the area. Let me show it to you with this video. So you see the red is coming and I will stop the video in a moment now. So here you see the product. It's going to be non-zero because the two functions are otherwise zero and the multiplication of zero times something even if it's this something is non-zero is zero. And I will plot here in black the area here indicated in yellow which is in this case is the superposition of the two uh, rectangular function. You see that the area is increasing until it is maximal and then it's decreasing as the red, tri the red rectangle is sliding away. So you see here that convolving together two rectangle functions leads to another function which is a triangular shaped function. And then it is zero anywhere else. Let me give you another example in which there will be one rectangle and one exponential arch that will be convolved together. So as I said, the operation is commutative. So right now I'm making the red rectangle uh, uh, flipping and shifting and sliding to be multiplied and the area below to be integrated, to be calculated. But the, the opposite could have been also made equivalently because of this commutativity. Let me run this video. Here it's coming and you will see the same concept. There is an area and the area this time is going to change a little bit in a different way. It's not a triangle. It keeps into account these exponential arch. Let me stop it. And what you can see here is that this sliding and multiplication and calculation of the area of this multiplication leads to a kind of smoothing. Roughly speaking, here the two functions were actually quite uh, steep, where uh, the, the, the angle and the transitions were very steep, were instantaneous. Instead, the triangle is a little bit smoother than the original functions. And here it's the same. We started with a rectangle, we convolve it with an exponential arch, which is zero before and then afterwards it's an exponential. And the, the outputs, the result of this convolution is another function, and this function is kind of resembling a rectangle. So you see it's zero before, it kind of goes up and then down, but in a smooth way. It's a kind of blurring, like when you take a picture, but it gets out of focus. It's a very similar concept.